A man was in prayer, and he got a sense that God was really right there listening. And so he asked a question. He said, God, what is a million years like to you? And God said to him, my child, a million years is like a second. And he said, well, what is a million dollars like to you? And God said, oh, a million dollars is like a penny. And the man thought about that for a moment and the amazement of you know, all of these uh, grand ideas. And he said, God, yes, my child, can I have a penny? And God said, sure, just a second. We do understand as Christians that all things, good things come from God. And uh, certainly wealth is within that province. And Jesus was not afraid to talk about things like wealth and treasure to stimulate the mind and help us to uh, understand the greater principles of the kingdom. Now, Jesus was always at least uh, somewhat uh, standoffish about wealth. He did not collect it personally in his life, and he cautioned his believers uh, that we should uh, not collect treasure for ourselves on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, but rather that we should collect for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. So uh, the way that we do that is by giving away uh, the things that God has given to us, using them in the service of the kingdom of heaven. So when Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven, he's not afraid to use uh, descriptions of things that uh, might excite us, might, might interest us. And so we have this parable here. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So he's telling us about the kingdom of heaven. And again, the kingdom of heaven is, is hard for us to quite get our minds around because we never get to see it perfectly. And it's actually bigger than our minds can fit in, in the current state of our, of our brains. Now, when we're truly in the presence of God, it will all make sense. And sometimes as we go through life, the Holy Spirit will, will just have us in sync in such a way that it all makes sense at least for a little while. But as we try to understand the kingdom of heaven, Jesus tries to use various different uh, metaphors to help us understand. Now, I don't think this is an actual person. I don't think anyone ever actually found this uh, treasure hidden in a field like this, but it's certainly plausible. Uh, the Middle East is a land and, that had been conquered back and forth numerous times, and you know, there'd been various kinds of uh, oppressions that had taken place. It's quite possible that a, uh, uh, a rich person might have found themselves needing to run away and hidden their wealth in the ground and, and then not ever been able to get back to it. It's possible that there, were, there is treasure in fields there. And for the common man who might very well have found himself digging in somebody else's field, well, that would have been a, uh, a fantasy that maybe, just maybe, you'll find something amazing when you're digging a ditch or plowing or you know, doing something like that, irrigating. You, you might luckily find some kind of treasure. So uh, it stimulates the imagination. Ooh, I sure would like to do that. And so most of Jesus's listeners are, of course, regular folks who had jobs like that, that, that would put them in places where they might be digging on someone else's field. Now, Ethically, there's a problem here. It says that they, he found, they find this treasure hidden in the field, okay? You know, they're digging and they hit something hard and they look and it's a box and inside of it is, is, uh, you know, is great treasure. But you know what? If you find it that way and it's on somebody else's property, at least in those times, it doesn't belong to you. You, you can't keep that treasure. Now, you might hope to get a finder's fee, but... Ethically speaking, you ought to get at least half of that treasure, but legally speaking, you're not entitled to any of it. So the person who finds that treasure has got themselves in something of a dilemma. Legally, the only way that they can claim that treasure is to hide it again, go find enough money somehow to buy that field, buy the field from its legal owner, and now legally, that treasure is yours. But now, ethically, it's you know, questionable because you have uh, uh, kept information back from the owner of the field. So ethically, there's, you know, there's problems on both sides of, uh, of finding a treasure in a field. It's not as simple as, oh, I found it, now, now I'm rich. It, uh, there, there's a requirement that, that you move from, from one place to another. 
But that's really not where Jesus is going with this. Jesus is going for the emotional appeal of it. Wow, I found the treasure. Now, how do I, how do I keep it? Because you see the treasure at first, but you don't get to have it. And sometimes we might just get a glimpse of what the kingdom of God really is like, of what our mission in life really should be, or, or how it really works uh, when people love each other and, and are willing to, uh, to go out of their way to, to serve God and do things that make the world a better place. We might just see those things and know that there really is a treasure, a treasure that we don't quite have, but we can see it. And in a lot of ways, the kingdom of God is, it's a little bit beyond our grasp, but we want it. And, and seeking it, it makes sense once you know that it's really there. Once this guy finds this treasure, there's nothing else that can enter his mind. Everything that he thinks about is about how to acquire this treasure for himself. How can I uh, get this field so that it's legally mine? And, and just the same way, when we recognize you know, the power and the kingdom of God, it should draw our attention to it. Uh, the uh, emotional excitement of, of knowing uh, what is, is there and what we could have if we can get ourselves to the place where it belongs to us. Uh, that emotional excitement is, is what Jesus is driving at. He's trying to, to help people uh, kind of buy into that excitement and recognize just how wonderful it would really be for us to be part of the kingdom of God. Now, I, I think we make various steps towards the kingdom of God. It's not just a, a, a winner-take-all, one-time thing. Uh, yes, there's, there's maybe a moment in our lives, and for some people this is uh, a, a, a moment that they look back to for a long time, a moment where they crossed over from death to life, where they recognized that Jesus Christ was Lord and Savior, and from that moment forward, everything was different. That's one way uh, to discover this treasure in the field. But there are many others. There, it could be that you could come to a place in your life where you realize a loving act that, that could be made. And this loving act changes your life and it changes the lives of others around you. And nothing is ever quite the same because you experienced how to live out the kingdom of God in a special way. Or you come upon your call and you recognize the way in which you're supposed to be connecting to, uh, to the world and, and how you're supposed, why God puts you here on this earth. Uh, what things you can do that no one else is ever going to do if you don't do them. When we find those things, it's like finding treasure in the field. It ought to just attract our attention in such a powerful way that we want to do everything we can to, to, to uh, have that treasure be ours forever. And there is a, a forever sense uh, for the treasure, which is the kingdom of God. You know, there is a uh, a, a place where we can ultimately uh, be reconciled completely to God and sin and, and tears are no more and uh, we are, are together forever with God. But that's not yet. Uh, for now, we're supposed to be in that uh, intervening period where we know the treasure is there and we're trying to acquire it. We're moving back and forth between those things. Now, there's a second story, which is a twin to it, right, right next to it, the next verse, 45. This is in Matthew chapter 13. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, this pearl merchant is very different from the uh, worker in the field. For one thing, the pearl merchant has been seeking for treasure all of his life, and he knows what it looks like. He knows what a, a fine pearl would look like. Even if he's never seen it, he's seen many good pearls, uh, but he's never seen this great and marvelous pearl. But he's been seeking. He's spent his whole time doing it. Whereas the, uh, the, the person who was digging in the field just stumbled upon it. Now maybe he had fantasies about maybe one day finding a treasure, but they are very different kinds of folks. Uh, the, the one who just stumbles upon the kingdom of God has it presented to them as they're just going through their daily life, doing their regular work, or just being a, a regular person, and the one who spends their time seeking it diligently, uh, who, who from uh, an early age has probably been doing a lot of things to try to make those connections to God, and then finally comes to discover it. And of course, a pearl merchant is quite uh, exotic, uh, for the person in the uh, audience of Jesus. Now, if you lived in Nazareth, you might go your entire life without ever actually seeing a pearl merchant. In Jerusalem, you probably would have seen one or two. But 
you know kind of what it's like. You know this is a fancy person that's, that's really educated and well-traveled and, and uh, dresses well and attends the finest parties and you know, works with, with uh, wealthy and royalty and so forth like that. You kind of have an idea of who this guy is, who a pearl merchant is. And then there's not an ethical problem here. There's a business decision problem here. Uh, again, uh, Jesus isn't focusing on that as, as the, the, uh, the point of the story, but it does help us remember it. When we think about you know, how that guy had to get that field, it, it sort of uh, twists our brain enough uh, that we remember the story a little bit better. And when the pearl merchant makes this really bad business decision, it kind of sticks in my head anyway. Uh, the uh, guy sees this great pearl, okay, but then he sells everything he has and buys it. You're not a pearl merchant anymore if you just have one pearl and you're not willing to trade it for anything because you think it's the most valuable thing in the world. So from a business standpoint, he just put himself out of business. And that uh, helps us kind of remember the parable because this pearl merchant is obviously crazy. Uh, you, if you are a pearl merchant, you just don't run your business like that. You, you are finished if you do that kind of thing. You can't eat that pearl. You're, you're out of business. So uh, from a, uh, a business standpoint, it's crazy. But from the, the point of, of explaining what the kingdom of God is like, it's perfect. We ought to be able to recognize that there really is something more important than everything else in the world. There really is something more valuable than anything else in the world. And we should be willing to sacrifice whatever it is it takes to get it. So this salvation, this pearl of great price, it is this connection to God through Jesus Christ. And when we have that connection in our lives, it just pushes everything else into a different kind of perspective. It reorders our priorities. And from that moment on that we have that connection, it, it should bring that kind of excitement and joy from time to time. Now, I know it's hard to maintain that kind of excitement of, of just having found the treasure and, and going to, to get it, or just having seen this pearl and, and trying to sell everything you can so to get it. It's hard to maintain that kind of excitement, and, and certainly the world throws all kinds of curveballs at us so that you know, we get downcast from time to time. We forget who we really are in Jesus Christ, and, and we, we uh, can easily uh, fall prey to all kinds of worries and anxieties. But when we're at our best, we have this kind of joy and excitement of knowing that we are here and not yet, that the treasure is there for us, that we can have it. It's just a matter of doing all that we need to do to get to that place. And so as we go through our lives, uh, we ought to recognize this pearl of great price, this treasure in the field, it's real. It does exist. God has put it there for us. It's just a question of us being willing to do what it takes to get there, to reorganize our lives, to uh, put God first, to be willing to recognize that, yes, we are sinners. We have fallen short of what God has asked us to do, and we need forgiveness. We need grace. And when we reach out and receive that grace, it is like receiving the greatest treasure in the world. And we now have this perfect relationship with Jesus, this, and love begins to flow through us and out of us and to make the world into uh, a great treasure indeed.